So real quick, everyone, I wanted to actually make an announcement. So one of my friends is actually helping us with a brand new channel and he's helping me upload videos in Chinese and we're posting a bunch of our League of Legends moments videos as well as some other League videos there for the Chinese audiences. We're bringing some awesome League of Legends content to this channel and we've posted quite a few videos already. It's a pretty fun idea for a channel and I'm excited to be working with him on it. And if that kind of thing interests you, check it out at the link in the description and subscribe. Thanks and enjoy the rest of the video. What's up guys, it's me Jeremy. So we're pretty far into season eight right now and Riot are showing no signs of halting their goal to fix up old or problematic playstyles on champions. A huge part of this process is having the gameplay developers come up with these sort of mini reworks that allows them to make significant changes to a champion's abilities and mechanics without requiring a full scale operation gameplay update. Today, we have a small list of champions that Riot has recently confirmed to be due for some of these planned little mini reworks, along with a bit of information about what you could expect to change with these champions specifically. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like on it or let us know in the comments section below and be sure to subscribe for some more videos. So our first mini rework plan comes from Riot August, who has been attempting to get Nidalee back to being a functional solo laner. In the old days of League of Legends, it was very common to see something like an AD Nidalee top or a mid lane AP Nidalee, but currently she kind of only really sees play in the jungle. And this happened because of her last major rework that turned her kind of from one of the more versatile champions in the game to a pretty binary jungler that just lands a spear, jumps in, and sort of repeats that gameplay process all game long. Although there were a lot of mixed feelings from the community about the previous rework, most people have kind of just been frustrated that she can't realistically or viably play in solo lanes anymore. And Riot August has been attempting to fix this, but it currently seems like her kit doesn't support lane play without introducing significant game health risks or just making her jungling extremely overpowered, which means that bringing back laning Nidalee is gonna end up requiring some inherent mechanical changes rather than just buffing her numbers, which is of course doable, but is gonna take a little bit more work in scope. Riot August compared it to the changes they made to Rengar previously and mentioned that he planned to do some exploration work once he's finished on his current full visual gameplay update that he's working on. Now there's a little bit of a fair chance that nothing will end up being done and Nidalee mains will have to continue to be pretty disappointed with the state she's in, but hopefully Riot August can figure out a way to bring back lane Nidalee and improve jungle Nidalee without making either one broken. Next up, we've got some proposed changes for Fizz from Riot Meddler, who mentioned that Riot will be taking a look at him after the mid-season updates have settled. Like Nidalee, there's a little bit of a disappointed Fizz player base who were kind of unhappy about the direction that Riot went with his last rework, even going as far as comparing the design principles to the one that made Riot revert LeBlanc's rework. Riot Meddler mentioned that of all the changes, Riot was fairly pleased with how Fizz's new ultimate works. Giving it power scaling based on distance means that a pretty vanilla skill shot ability gained a lot of additional variety in how it can be used. For example, you can use it for some quick, hard to dodge crowd control in close range, or you can take a much bigger risk at the chance of missing the ability and throw it further out and be rewarded if you land it with more damage and extra duration of crowd control. One thing that Riot Meddler did specifically mention that they might look at is Fizz's W, Seastone Trident, though he didn't provide details on what specifically might be changed. Fizz's W was originally changed because of how effective it made his tank build and because it kind of had a very big element of hidden power to it, but the main concern of Fizz players is how linear the new rework made him. It's definitely better to play against since you pretty much know exactly how a fight with Fizz is gonna go, but that trade-off came at the cost of sacrificing a lot of the fun that you get while playing him. You could be a really creative player with the old Fizz, which played into his trickster narrative pretty well, but the new version is kind of only a shadow of his former self, even if he isn't that much worse in terms of overall viability. 
Up next, we have Riot Repertoire sharing some information about potential changes for Kindred in the future. He had a conversation with the original designer for Kindred, who is Riot Rex, who shared some thoughts of his on how they could make playing Kindred a more enjoyable experience. The proposal included a few things, which we'll go over one at a time. First up, it needs to be easier for Kindred to gain marks, but each mark should be a little bit less powerful as a result to compensate for that. This is a pretty simple one to understand. A farmed Kindred with a ton of marks is super hard to deal with, but if you deny the marks from Kindred, they end up being too far behind to be useful at all, so it's a very sink or swim sort of gameplay style. By making marks easier to acquire in general, but also less powerful, you'd end up with a much more reasonable system that provides benefits, but doesn't make her too overpowered or too weak based on how efficiently you manage to farm marks throughout the game. Next is a suggestion to reduce the mark warm up time on enemy champions and to improve the balance between champion and jungle based marks. One of the issues Riot has found over the years is that the jungle meta is either farm 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 or gank gank gank. They've tried many things to get junglers into a position where they can do a good mix of both and Kindred is special in the fact that their marks provide them a great way to encourage a diverse jungle approach for them. Riot Rex also recommended removing the WQ interaction and just allowing the Q cooldown to be reduced when it hits a champion or a monster. Although Wolf claiming this sort of territory that allows Lamb to be more nimble is cool from a thematic standpoint, in reality it results in some subpar gameplay. There's kind of just two ways it ends up going. Either Kindred dances around and deals a ton of damage, or Kindred cannot hold that position and ends up dealing very little damage. Allowing the Q to refresh itself when hitting a champion or monster without relying on the W would allow Kindred to play the same risky close range playstyle, but without relying on staying within this confined area where she can be easily collapsed on and is forced to make herself vulnerable and more importantly predictable. Instead, managing their Q would become more about keeping an eye on your mana and making sure you're just kiting appropriately. With W no longer used as a mobility enabler, you'd be able to also give it a bigger radius and let Wolf be a more significant part of fights with his auto attacks. These ideas are all just concepts from Riot Rex's proposal and are not necessarily the direction Riot will go with the Kindred changes, but they do open up some interesting discussions and there's a lot of rioters who responded positively to these sort of ideas. They might be a little bit too powerful on paper, but you could definitely balance them out with some base stat or damage nerfs which could allow Riot to make Kindred much more fun and viable to play without pushing her into overpowered territory. These changes will almost certainly be tested at some point just to see if they're worth pursuing, but it seems like Riot are really waiting to hear from Kindred players about what would excite them the most. Without a clear direction and a real reason to start actually testing, changes like these are likely to just happen whenever a developer happens to have the time to actually work on the changes. So as far as the timing of the release of these changes, it's going to depend a lot on how the priorities of other developments in the balance of League of Legends play out. And next up today, we've got some more changes for, of course, the number one most reworked champion in the game, which is Ryze. Riot has been taking issue with the huge disconnect between pro level Ryze players and your average ranked level Ryze players. I mean, historically, ever since Ryze's most recent rework, he's had a horrible win rate in solo queue, but yet has been top tier in pro play ever since. So there's a very big disparity here. And Riot Repertoire has proposed some changes to hopefully close that sort of skill gap a little bit. Ryze is one of those champions that's really hard to duel, but also offers a lot of potential for huge organized plays with his ultimate, so this is where Repertoire wants to focus his proposed balance changes. To start, the rework would reduce his dueling power in the early game and push him back into being a late game scaling monster like he was maybe like four reworks ago or something like that. They're also looking at changing his W root into a slow instead and giving the empowered version a shorter duration route 
and giving his ultimate a longer cooldown but the full range of the ability at all ranks. As you can probably guess, these proposed changes have gone down with a little bit of mixed reviews to say the least. Ryze's strength in pro play no doubt comes from his ability to duel early on and make huge plays in the mid game with his ultimate, but taking power away from his early game while leaving him with a longer cooldown, team play based ultimate probably isn't going to be that great for solo queue players. In fact, alongside the removal of the Zonia's Hourglass interaction with his ultimate, it just makes the ultimate in general harder to use as an escape, which is one of the only viable ways to consistently use it in solo queue. The removal of the root from Ryze's base W as well is a massive hit to the champion in general. His point and click root is one of the major things that still exists from the original Ryze that players have always loved and it's been a very reliable tool, but it's also never been particularly overpowered unless he's able to refresh the cooldown a little bit too quickly, like, I don't know, maybe two and a half reworks ago. Removing this and forcing it onto the empowered version will no doubt cause a lot of people to abandon Rise entirely, or at least could have the opposite effect of what these changes are trying to accomplish. The last upset from these proposed changes is based on his E. Increasing its cooldown to a massive 9 seconds is a part of how Riot chooses to potentially reduce his early game dueling power, but now it kind of makes him completely incapable of dueling in the early game at all. You know, the question to look at with any Rise changes is of course, how are these changes gonna benefit solo queue players? Because that's where Rise really struggles. He's kind of just too difficult to play and requires too much coordination on a team level for Rise to be successful as a champion. Now these changes are definitely nerfs targeted at Rise for the pro scene but they also hurt solo queue rise players too. And of course, these changes aren't set in stone and will likely go through a ton of testing, but so far it's looking like the rise changes that are upcoming aren't exactly ideal for the goals that Riot is trying to accomplish with them, so we'll have to see how these ones play out. But let's be honest here, Riot Games does not exactly have the best history when it comes to reworking rise, so we'll have to see how this one plays out for sure. Either way, that's going to be it for today's video on upcoming planned little mini reworks. Definitely let us know your thoughts on any of the champion changes we discussed, because I'd love to know what you guys think about these potential upcoming changes, as well as the reworks that Riot is just planning in general. Either way, it looks like that's going to be it for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.